Hi, it's Zara here from Cat Sitter Toronto Incorporated, and today I'm going to show you how you can make some easy to make uh, puzzle feeders at home for your cats. With things that you might have lying around your house, or things you might be able to pick up in a thrift store, so it'd be nice and cheap um, and easy to make. Some of the reasons we might use a puzzle feeder with cats are one, um, if you have a cat who is a big eater and will just eat the food that you put in the bowl in front of them and you want them to kind of have free feed access but if you do it the traditional way they're going to gain 10 pounds in a week then you'd want to use a puzzle feeder to try and help slow down how fast they're eating and another reason that i would use for my cats is that it engages them mentally cats are by nature inquisitive and curious mm -hmm and are constantly trying to figure things out. So by giving them a puzzle feeder, you're not only just giving them a toy, but you're giving them a reward with it as well. So it's really nice to have, especially if you have a cat who's really active and really demands attention. So without further ado, we're gonna get into today's uh, lesson on how to make some puzzle feeders. So here is a puzzle feeder that I actually purchased. I purchased it from PetSmart. Uh, the company name is called Catit. Uh, Catit makes lots of great pet products, um, specifically for cats, but this is one of their puzzle feeders. And uh, what I like about this one is that it has lots of different areas where the cats can access the food, and they vary in degree of difficulty. So as my cats figure it out and slowly learn how to get the food out, then they'll move on to the harder ones and work with it there. I also like that it's a nice size so I can use it with the two cats easily. So here are the items we're going to use today to make our puzzle feeders. Um, like the one you just saw that I purchased, I purchased that for $24 I believe it was um, from PetSmart. So instead of spending $24 or more on a puzzle feeder if you're not sure if your cat is going to be responsive to it, Definitely investing in making one, taking a little bit of time in an afternoon and assembling one would be a cheaper way to make sure it's something that is going to work for your cat. So today the items I have here that we're going to use are an empty egg carton. Very simple, straightforward. You could use the 18 pack or the 12 pack. Any egg carton you have is fine. I have a piece of cardboard. I have this piece of leftover carpeting from when my stairs were carpeted um, but if you don't have any leftover carpeting at home you could easily pick up like a cheap carpet mat from a dollar store to use for this any kind of uh, textured surface carpet wise is easy to find and cheap I also have this plastic top from one of my kids tackle boxes um, they don't need this part and so I was able to pull it out, but what I like about it is that it already has different compartments in it that I'll be able to use in my puzzle feeder for the cats. So the first puzzle feeder we're going to make today has the cardboard base. Um, really any cardboard from any cardboard box you have will work. And it has the egg carton. Now I'm going to make it easy for my cats and take the lid off the egg carton. You could leave the lid on and put opening holes in or even put a cover over top to make it harder for your cats to get at the kibble or treats when you put them inside, but I'm not gonna do that today. So first off, I'm gonna remove the top of the egg carton. Once I've got the egg carton all prepped and ready to go. What I love about this puzzle feeder is that it is so easy to make. I'm going to position it on my cardboard. Now you might ask why I'm using cardboard and not just going to put this here and go. Egg carton material, yes it is a cardboard but it is very um, thin and it doesn't hold up to a glue gun very well. Um, so I'm going to use a glue gun to attach it to this cardboard but as you'll see, what I'm going to also do is put some daubs of uh, glue on the bottom as an anti-slip factor. So I don't want to do that on the flimsier cardboard and have it be what's securing it in place. So I'm going to do that on the harder one. Alright, so because this is an 18 piece egg carton, I'm going to put glue uh, randomly throughout just to help secure it to the cardboard. So I'm just going to do this nice and quickly. 
Now, as I was saying, with a puzzle feeder, you can use it to hold uh, dry kibble or treats. Um, it's a wonderful thing to use if you're traveling and you're going to be gone for a long period of time before somebody comes in to care for your cats. You can use a puzzle feeder to kind of put the treats out so they've got something to kind of keep them entertained um, when they don't have company. And right now, with the COVID in the world, our cats are all getting used to us being around on a more frequent basis. So it's always good to have something to keep them entertained when we can't be there. All right, so I'm just gonna press down where I've put the glue to make sure, I mean, it's hot glue, it tends to dry really quickly. Put it down to uh, have it secure steadily to there. See, it's already all stuck, perfect. Then I'm gonna flip it up and I'm gonna put my little anti-slip drops. So for these, I'm really just gonna do a quick little drop in random places. This is just to help prevent the cardboard from sliding all over the place when the cats are trying to get the kibble or treats out of the puzzle feeder. Um, that can be rather frustrating for them. It can also make a big mess. This way, wherever I put it, it's going to stay secure on the floor. So I'll let that dry a bit. I'm just waving my hand there to get it to dry. And that is essentially the first puzzle feeder. As I said, you can definitely make it harder by covering over the individual egg portions and putting a little tiny hole for the cat's paw to reach in to get it. But I'm not going to do that this time around. I'm just going to leave it be like this. You can also take these parts off, the middle part, and make it all level. I'm going to leave it like this because I think I'm going to put treats on top as well as a way to encourage the cat to come and dig for the rest of them. All right, so here I am with the second version of puzzle feeder that I'm going to make with you guys today. For this, we're using a piece of cardboard. It doesn't have to be any specific size. It really just depends on how big the carpet piece is that you're using. I'm also using the plastic lid from my kids' uh, tackle box that they're not using anymore. And a big hunk of cardboard or carpet. This carpet is left over from renovation in my home. Um, so it's a rather thick carpet, but you could easily pick up a thin door uh, carpet mat from the dollar store to use for this as well. I like using carpet for this because it does give the cats another texture. Um, and my cats in particular love scratching on carpet. So this will give them the opportunity to have a scratching space right beside the puzzle feeder as well. So. First, what we're going to do is we're going to attach the carpet to the cardboard. Now, we could attach the carpet to a piece of wood or anything really stable. Just because the carpet is kind of flimsy on its own, we want to make it a bit more stable. So again, we're going to use our handy glue gun. I love a hot glue gun. It really does make any kind of crafting project that you're doing work a lot easier. Need to put a little bit more glue in. Also with these projects, if at any point it pops loose, it's really easy to just put it back together with a little bit more glue. Or if it gets too dirty or too worn out from the use with your cats, it is really easy to just take the pieces apart, recycle what you can, and start new with a new puzzle feeder. So, so now that I have the cardboard stuck to the carpet. See, it does make it a little bit more stable and not as flimsy. I'm going to work on securing this to the carpet. Now, I haven't made one like this before, so I'm already thinking that it might not stick as well with the glue gun. And if that's the case, I'll have to relook at it and how else I could attach it. Um, if you're handy, there's lots of ways you could attach it with a drill and some wires. Um, you could also tie it onto it, which would add a string factor, which, as we know, cats love string as well. But I'm going to try the hot glue and see what happens. So really, I'm just going to put glue all around the bottom and stick this on the carpet, kind of in the middle. So it has like a little bit of a scratching space on both sides and a little bit on the top and the bottom. All right, so... For those of you who don't know, I have two cats. Um, and they are directors in the company of Cat Sitter Toronto Inc. Fang 
is our tuxedo cat and he is the director of shipping. Uh, he has that title because he loves boxes. And anytime we receive a shipment in the office, he is the first one to inspect the box before you open it. After you open it, he just loves them. Luna is our second cat here at Cats Here Toronto office. And she's an orange tabby. Her title is Director of Snuggles because by golly, she loves to cuddle. She loves to be around people. She cries for us when she can't find us in the house. She is definitely a cat who enjoys having an adult come to look in on her. Adult human, I should say, come in to look on her when we are on vacation. So I have attached this to the carpet and voila! Puzzle feeder number two. These are really simple designs. They're really designed for the first time puzzle feeder for your cat. They will allow them to work a little bit, but not too hard, so they don't get frustrated and they get the idea of working for their treat or their food. If your cat responds really well to a level one puzzle feeder, then you might want to look at investing in a bigger puzzle feeder like the cat at one I showed you, or in materials to create your own more fancy version of a puzzle feeder. One more quick thing to add, since I have everything together now, I'm going to put some more hot glue on the bottom of the cardboard here for the anti-slip grip. Again, you don't have to use hot glue for this. There's lots of products out there that are like furniture grips or things like that that would help to prevent your cardboard from slipping. So here are the completed puzzle feeders. Um, I'm gonna put them down. I already have Fang here. He's very excited because he heard me putting treats in. So I'm gonna put them down and see how well they work with my kitty cats. Oh, and here comes Luna. So these guys are gonna check them out. This is the best way um, to encourage your cat to use a puzzle feeder is definitely put in the treats that they love. Um, my cats here, they love temptation treats. Like every other cat that I've ever worked with seems to love these treats. I don't know what they put in them, but by golly, they are a loved treat um, by cats worldwide. As you can see, Luna is already working on hers. Uh, these guys are used to puzzle feeders, so these easy ones are going to be quite easy for them to use. As you can see, Fang and Luna are very interested in the puzzle feeders here. Um, they're gonna get working on them, it looks like, any moment now and uh, dig out some treats to enjoy. Please leave us a comment on uh, how your puzzle feeder for your pets at home worked out for you and if your cats enjoyed them or not. Uh, thanks for watching the video today and if you wanna learn more about Cat Sitter Toronto Incorporated and what it is that we do, please check out our website at www.catsittertoronto.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Mm -hmm.